Hi everybody, uh, looking at a Kubota G5200 I picked up recently, what I thought was a pretty good deal. Um, didn't really have too many glaring issues with it. <clears throat> Engine runs great. Uh, hats off to Kubota for making a, a wonderful three-cylinder, 600cc diesel engine. Um, uh, Got to be a believer in the in the Kubota parts now uh, compared to the the other tractors I have are all Mitsubishi's from the 70s. Of course, this one's from the 80s. Um, just no blow by, no smoke. I don't know how many hours are on it. It doesn't have the hour meter and and uh, temperature gauge there. I wish it did, but um, oil was clean in it when I bought it. it. May have just been changed. I don't know, but uh, just just an amazing little engine. I bet you any, nothing's been done to it from from when it came to the factory so definitely desirable for that much uh, unfortunately it doesn't have the mower deck uh, and I guess those are prone to rusting out so uh, so basically it's just gonna act more as a tractor than anything for pulling stuff um, but I guess when I when I got it home I I checked the uh, alternator wasn't charging the the battery so so not unusual but but uh, something I had to look into and uh, ultimately it came down to the regulator. Here's the, I believe the factory reg regulator. I don't think anybody's changed it. Um, so I searched on eBay for a, for a replacement regulator and I think I paid 30 bucks for one, which was way too much that I thought was a direct replacement because the I thought this had the D-style connector on it when I first looked under the in the wiring and it's actually for a different harness but um, when it came in the mail it didn't have that so I ended up sending it back but these you can get um, for probably around 10 bucks if you look for them um, but you might have to do something with the wiring so anyway uh, these tractors unfortunately I say unfortunately because they're they're kind of disappointing uh, they come with a permanent magnet alternator and uh, although they're probably fairly reliable and whatnot um, the problem with them is they don't put out any any voltage until you get them spinning around uh, uh, well until the engine speeds probably up over 2000 rpm or so which is fine if you're doing mowing but because <clears throat> I don't have a mower I'm not gonna be mowing and I really don't like running everything up to max speed everywhere I go I like to keep things more around the idle idle range good or bad or indifferent I just don't want all the extra noise and just feels better to have it more at idle so the problem with that is this alternator doesn't put out any voltage therefore no current the battery won't charge so if you're doing a lot of idling uh, you're not you're not going to gain on and that's pretty typical. I mean essentially all this is is, is just uh, uh, Something to fill in for Like on your lawnmowers you have them a lot of times. They'll have the uh, a set of alternator windings uh, For the generator whatever you want to call it around the flywheel and, and those are the same deal You have to you have to speed the engine up a lot and normally if you're mowing you got cranked up. There's no big deal no, no, no problem. Your battery's going to get charged, but again, if you're idling around a lot, um, you're going to you're going to run into problems. And the other thing about these that doesn't help that situation, although it's diesel, it doesn't use any electrical, um, at least on this model, uh, for the engine itself. But it does have a fuel pump underneath the seat that pumps the fuel tanks underneath the seat here, which I I don't like on the rest of my tractors. The fuel tank is is higher than the engine. And I like that a lot better because you have gravity feed and funny enough gravity is much more reliable than any pump you're going to have. And then they stuck the battery up here. I almost thought about swapping the fuel tank up to here and then putting the, uh, the battery under the seat and then have a gravity feed. Eliminate that pump and the issues that go along with it, siphoning and airline leaks and things like that that you can get into. But after I looked it over, I thought that was too much work, so uh, I just kind of left it alone until it breaks, and then I'll revisit it. Um, so that's that's something else I wanted to look into. But anyway, back to the alternator situation. Um, and and that's the big difference between an alternator and, and a uh, permanent or a permanent magnet alternator versus a regulated alternator. 
is that you don't have to spin it very fast at all. In fact, at, at idle now, this, uh, the alternator I have on there, I'm going to show you, uh, will actually put out 10 amps. Um, anyway, back up here a little bit, back to the fuel pump. The point I was trying to make there was, or is, that uh, the fuel pump actually draws a little bit of power too. So not only are you not charging with your permanent magnet alternator, you're using up some of your battery power by running the fuel pump, even though it's very minimal. But over time, if you're doing a lot of idling and running, you're, you're going to notice that your battery gets low and uh, creates issue starting and potentially allows it to freeze easier if it's not fully charged. So anyway, highly disappointed there with uh, that they didn't put a real alternator on these coming from the factory. Uh, obviously bonus that they put diesel in a, in a lawn tractor. That's a big, big help, but they kind of skimped on the rest of it. Um, the, other, the other issue I had with this is, and it's very common I found out after I bought it, is the, is the slop in the steering. And I've yet to look at that, but I'm hoping that can be uh, remedied fairly easy, but uh, I can live with it as it is. Um, otherwise, uh, otherwise, very nice tractor. Uh, you can, you know, I paid 600 bucks for this one. Um, I, I, I'm sure you can. I've seen people on YouTube bought them for 300. Just an amazing deal to have something that like that with a diesel. Um, again, I doubt anybody's ever touched that engine. No carburetors to fiddle with. Nothing else. Just super reliable and uh, and run great great power too great acceleration um, out of that engine so much better than the two cylinder versions uh, so uh, getting back to what the point of this is, is is what's it take to get that alternator in here <clears throat> this alternator is actually um, a Chinese alternator that is made, or I'll, it, it shows up under the Kubota name. I, I actually bought two of them. I didn't want two of them, but I ordered two of them just uh, out of uh, more of an accident than anything. But uh, just a wonderful tiny little alternator. It's rated at 40 amps. Um, it's not a one wire alternator, but it's, it's darn close. Has internal fan, internal regulator. This is your battery connection, and then you have the uh, two connections that uh, I'm not super familiar with alternators, but one is uh, needs to be hooked up to a 12 volt uh, supply. Let me double check here what I actually did. Uh, yeah, this one, the vertical post when you put that in, which is on the left, has to have a 12 volt supply, and then the one on the right is uh, actually goes to your indicator light, and that will show 12 volts if uh, uh, or actually they'll go to ground that's a that'll be a ground signal when uh, when the all turns off and then when it's running it comes up 12 volts so we'll talk about what you need to do here a little more um, in a minute so uh, I did get on with basically pretty minimal uh, modifications this bracket here and I apologize if you can't see that well too well there's actually two bolts in this adjuster uh, bracket and th this arm because this alternator is bigger than the other one it has to swing up so I just cut the bottom one off and I'm using just the top bolt only kind of rounded it off so it's swing swinging up and down um, so that was uh, that was one modification but I, I didn't have to uh, do anything with the uh, the distance uh, in and out up on top on the bottom use the same uh, bolt lug but I did if you can see there I did have to cut part of the uh, the ear on the bottom of the alternator to, to keep the belt alignment. Um, let me show you on this one. It's probably a little bit easier. So you want to cut not not quite half of this off. And I would recommend this is supposed to be a pretty square machine surface. If you can do that with a mill, it would be better. I ended up cutting it with a hacksaw and then filing it. Unfortunately, that doesn't give me a square surface to uh, mount to so when you go tighten this up at least in my case it, it actually bends the alternator a little bit and causes a misalignment with your belt so so this isn't perfect um, alignment but it's good good enough um, I ran it up full speed it doesn't look like it's about ready to fall off or anything and I'll just have to continue to watch that so uh, again uh, this lug here is your battery connection these are all hooked to the battery um, and then this inner connection is 
your 12 volt, I would recommend you wire that off your ignition switch, 12 volts off your ignition. If you leave it on all the time, it might draw your battery down. I didn't spend a lot of time with that. At one point, it looked like it was drawing three amps when it was hooked up, but I, I'm not sure if I had all the wiring hooked up right or whatever. And at any rate, uh, this other one uh, that's towards the middle of the engine is your uh, for your indicator light, which for now I just put a uh, a 12 volt LED in there. So when you turn on your on your switch yes that's bright and it's annoying but uh, i'll get a red cap to put over top of that and of course you got your oil light over here you can hear the fuel pump running and then when you start the engine that will go out um, so I, i'm not going to do that because there's nothing exciting you start up the light goes out and you got goes up to 14 volts and whatever amps it needs to charge the battery so uh so that's what you got to do to convert these over. And the neat thing about these, if I didn't say it already, these are about 49, currently 49 bucks off eBay. So just a nice little small alternator for a lot of applications. I might use them on my other tractor someday if I have to, uh, just because getting originals for those are difficult, uh, mainly because of the mounting for them. But again, 40 amps, I, I think uh, they, they send them with these uh, little data sheets, test reports, which are interesting. I'm not sure if I fully understand them, but um, basically looking at the at the chart here at about a thousand RPM on the I'm assuming on the alternator, you know you start generating power and uh, already at you know 1200 RPM, 1250 you're at 10 amps of uh, 10 amps of output uh, at whatever voltage that is 14.3 or whatever. Um, not really sure about all these charts here. They're talking I don't. I don't know what vacuity is. Uh, I don't know if that's supposed to be value. They they list as valet. KPA. The only KPA I'm familiar with is pressure. I don't know why. I, I don't know the pressure of what they're talking about here. So, apologize for my ignorance on on this sort of thing. But um, uh, I'm guessing you know they, they list these different counts for power speed no load speed I, they're very close I'm not even sure what they're trying to get at here but the takeaway for me anyway was is it puts out about 14.3 volts uh, nominal and um, or I mean actual 12 volt nominal and then this is your wonderful cur wonderful curve which if you can take it up to four four thousand rpm it says it puts out 60 amps so I don't know how long it'll last. It seems like just a little bit I was running is getting pretty warm, um, but compared to other alternators, I don't know. I don't pay attention a lot with that. So anyway, for for about 50 bucks, which I don't know, this was like I said, I was 30 and, and it was it was the wrong one, so I sent it back. But again, you can get those for 10, but just for 40 bucks more, you can get an alternator that will get get you your charge at all engine speeds. And it actually fits in here fairly easily with that just that modification that cut down here on that ear and, and up here just cutting the bottom of that bracket off so it only holds by one bolt instead of two and then i put a quarter inch bolt in here it is to the full to the maximum um, adjustment and the belt isn't super tight i'd actually wish it was a little bit tighter but um it's 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 fine. So uh, uh, the other thing is when you're putting that alternator in, you you pretty much got to have it unbolted, and you kind of got to tip it in. Let me use this one to get the belt on. The belt almost looks like it doesn't fit at first, so you got to kind of tip it in and get it hooked on the belt. Then, because this pulley this pulley is pretty deep, so once you get the pulley or the belt in the groove, then that gives you some uh, more room and actually once you actually get the alternator in there it's you do have to take up on the adjustment so it might seem like it doesn't work at first but it does thank goodness because when I first started to do it I thought I'm gonna have to put a bigger belt on and one thing I'm not looking forward to is changing the belt on here because the output of that goes into the coupler for the hydrostat it's not like you can just slip and I apologize if the light is washing out everything you can't just um, slip the belt off around the fan and then change it. You got to take that coupling off, which I don't know how that actually comes off yet. I'm sure it's probably not the easiest. It'd be probably better to work from underneath the tractor. I don't know, but uh, I see there's a you know maybe that's all you got to do is take these Allen heads off here or these Allen bolts and it comes right apart. I don't know. I 
would hope that's the case. Otherwise, if there's bolts that are uh, on on the back side that are running in here, which I suspect there is, I don't know how easy those are going to be to get to without uh, pulling some the radiator out or whatever you need to do. And I didn't feel like doing all that because that's going to probably take me a half a day to do that. So. Uh, so anyway, it's 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 promising. It's cheap. You can get a good alternator on here. Um, I guess if it fails, it isn't the end of the world. Uh, put another one on. I don't know. I guess that's why I have another one. Maybe if I run across none of these, I'll put do the same thing to it. Uh, I'm going to put some LED lights in there. Probably work on that today, just because to, the other one's been smashed up here. And uh, LEDs are so cheap, it's it's uh, kind of a no-brainer to put them in anymore. So just mounting them can be a it can be somewhat of a challenge at times so uh so that's it um looking forward to using this like i said it was just a cheap cheap little tractor that's something or something i can park for months at a time and expect it to still start and not have to worry about cleaning car bears, old gas whatever and uh last thing i wanted to show you this uh just put a, a hitch uh two inch receiver on here and this all this is is it's like a twenty dollar um uh I forget what they they call it step step hitch or some step receiver from Harbor Freight. Um, really didn't have to do much to it, but drill four holes, and you're not going to be able to see them very well. But on the back of this axle, there's actually spots for eight bolts. Um, if you just drill two holes in here and catch the top um, top mounting uh, holes on each side, that's really all you got to do. So those are M10 by one and a half pitch. Uh, it was a little confusing at first because they were plugged up and I wasn't sure. Uh, somehow it, you can actually run an M9 by 125 in there just because it's smaller and looser. So it gives you the impression that they're a different size. So those are M10 by 1.5 and clean them out with a tap. And uh, the pattern on it, they're 110 millimeters uh, wide and then I think 36 millimeters tall, 35 or 36, it's, it was hard to measure. But if you can put that pattern, transfer that into here, which this has plenty of room to do that, just draw them out and put them in there, and then you got a you got your uh, receiver for the different uh, different attachments you can put in there, and then you of course still got the the mount on the bottom, and that's good for the pin type uh, attachments. Although now I don't know if I can get my pin in there uh, to push it in through the bottom, maybe if that fits. So I might have a problem there, but I have an adapter that I can put pin. Uh, you can pin it to there, and actually you could probably pin it to here if you want to, uh, or or even the chain. Well, no, you couldn't do that either, but maybe maybe one of these if that, even though it'll be offset. But uh, anyway, cheap cheap way of getting a, getting a nice receiver on the back here, solid. And uh, that's all I got. Uh, maybe I'll get into the steering sometime. And... Um, I don't know, just want to pass that on and uh, share that with you. So if you're having problems with your keeping your battery charged, that's probably why I recommend doing this this fairly easy upgrade. Um, you know, cutting this, I just, again, used a hacksaw for it. This is pretty soft material, so it's pretty easy to hacksaw, or you could use a uh, sawzall on that as well. But like I said, ideally, you'd mount it up in a mill and, and mill that down to keep that, or, or at least finish it in the mill so that it's square, so that it keeps your alignment. So... Uh, so I would say just just target this split in the uh, in the um, um, casting there, uh, just maybe a sixteenth to the right of that is, is all you have to do, and that will give your belts good enough alignment and um, be up and running. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, please uh, correct anything I said. I certainly make mistakes at times, and uh, look forward to getting the right information out there, or any other suggestions you have about these. Uh, these tractors that are good useful tips so appreciate it